All right, hello everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. Today, our topic about the terrorism and terrorist uh, attack, and how many of them we receive already in the year 2018. You know, the world was busy and it still will be busy with the stupid things actors, football. This guy, he, he was making uh, 10 goals. The people in the stadium, they were fighting over a ball. People beating each other. Uh, people arguing about uh, stupid things like Trump. He used to have a relationship with, with the porn star. I mean, all those garbage things. But nobody want to tell you how bad things it is in this earth these days. They try to keep you busy from all the important things which is going to touch your life and make you busy with the stupid things like the prince who is getting married to an actor the whole world is watching I'm not sure what a human being is looking for sometime I feel like a human being is a suicide project not only Islam encourage suiciding because when you ignore a threat, you are seeking suicide. And obviously your government, not only encouraging your su suicide of your society, but they are working for it. You know, when Europe invite everybody to come to Europe and there is no background check and nobody knows who are they, and even there is no papers, that is a suicide mission for Europe. When your European leaders, they say to you that Islam is peace or Canadian or whatever. But nobody want to tell you the truth. If you see the map, if you see the map, which is in the front of you right now, it is astonishing and scary. Right now, we are in May 19. We are in May 19. And the numbers of attack is 515 attack. 515. The year have 365 days. We did not even reach the half of the year. That's mean the average of terrorist attack is between two to two to three a day. And now the month of Ramadan, that's mean the attacks will increase and will go crazy because those Muslims, they believe if they kill in Ramadan, their killing is double rewarded. They don't want you to know how scary what's happening. They want to make you believe that you can go and sit in your couch and eat some popcorn and everything is fine and you know let us watch together in Fox News CNN all those fake stations the wedding of a prince who is going to divorce in two or three years from now and who care even why uh, why in the world I want to watch his wedding I mean what is that because it's a fancy is that because he is spending the money of the citizen over his wedding because he's a prince is that because people in Britain, Britain, they pay tax and he spent it for his party? Can we make the same wedding for every Britain citizen? Who paid for it with the wedding party? Who paid for the security? It is the British people. You know, people, they are really naive and still they think that this is a good occasion. They are sucking your blood. There's nothing that's called kings and princes. I thought those days are over. But a human being, he likes showtime. England announced just last month that London is one of the biggest knives attack and guns shooting, or let us say the highest in rank in the world. 
it's not it's not uh, Thailand it's not uh, Hong Kong it's not uh, it's not it's just London yet they are making you busy watching a stupid wedding party will end in a way we know how it's going to be count my words maximum three years from now they will seek divorce And why in the world I want to care for this? And why you are occupying my TV station with it, which you pay for for it? It's not even for free. They make money from you without knowing. But nobody want to give us a report and update us about terrorist attacks happening around the world. Especially if the terrorist attacks are happening in poor countries. You see, when poor Christians in Nigeria die, I mean, who care? Seriously, who care? They are just poor African Christians die. I mean, who who care? But if uh, a Saudi prince he bought uh, the Da Vinci paint, the whole TV stations in the world they will speak about His Majesty buying arts and collecting arts. They focus their lights on things have nothing to do with you. If somebody he bought a yacht and his yacht cost five hundred million dollars, I mean, what is the news of that for me? This is his money, and this is his yacht. And is the purpose to make me feel astonished about how much the money is and fake me make me feel more sad because I cannot even buy a car? Is that the purpose? Is the purpose to, to watch a, a fancy wedding to feel for yourself like pity for yourself that you cannot afford even to get married maybe? You can't afford even to pay for your bills? What is the purpose of those things? Why in the media they don't show you the reality of this earth and they try to focus in fantasy? Even the movies you watch is nothing real. Batman, Spider-Man, I mean, everything, everybody is man, and now they start having uh, spider women and pet women. Obviously, the media, they look at you as a human being, as a stupid creature. And they believe that we can suck his blood, take his money, make him pay for watching our movie and TV cable and pay for TV stations for nothing. And there is no return for the service. If you notice that a human being, he is in love in watching fiction stories. Fiction stories are very attractive. I don't mind from time to time to watch an entertaining movie full of lies, like the Pirate of the Caribbean. But at least this is a full of lie movie. I know it is a full of lie. But even their movies, who they try to present to you as it is a true story, Nothing there about is is a true story. As an example, wars about Al Bosnia. They try to present to you that the Serbian people are the ugly, disgusting people, criminals, when the fact they are the victims. This is your media, and this is how it is. Now let us check together the attacks or the list of attacks in the front of our eyes in the map. And by numbers. I hope my microphone is not making a noise. Hold on. I don't know why it's making a noise. Uh, let me mute it for a second. All right. Now I think it is fixed. If we look at the map in front of us, we will see that in the same day, you might find two to three to four attacks. And all of it, as we see, it's happening. It's by accident, by the way. It's not necessarily Islam, you know. I mean, it's happened that all of them done by Muslims. It happened. It's not really Islam is peace, as you know. But it happened 
that all those attacks and crimes happened by accident it's not not necessarily this is it's muslims are you know you know they are very peaceful people you know and islam is a very peaceful religion I mean, those people they are just it's uh it happened to be if you don't believe me ask your uh, president or a prime minister you know he will tell you that this is just uh an answer like i mean a consequence like uh, sometimes things happen but have nothing to do with muslims and have nothing to do with islam so attack in somalia attack in jalal abad afghanistan attack in pakistan and here you will see how many people get killed attack in indonesia attack in thailand this is just this is we are talking about this week we are not going far yet actually there is some attacks are not listed today there is an attack in in in, in uh, in Thailand uh, by bombs in the south of Thailand I saw it in the in the news and there is an attack of 17 Christians killed just yesterday in the Niger I don't see it so look like this uh, website is missing a lot of update you know this is just what to have there but there's a lot of things is missing the week before it the what is the attack of Shishenia let's see if the attack of Shishenia for the Christians is located uh Pakistan attack in Pakistan May 14 May 13 uh Philippine Abu Sayyaf three people killed uh Paris France one person get killed uh Araka Syria two people get killed uh Samara Salah Ad Ad Al Iraq four people get killed uh Kabana Kalan, Western Visayas, Philippines, two people get killed. Um, but uh, I can tell a lot of a lot of numbers are missing. You know, where is the numbers of Nigeria and where is the numbers of just this? You know, uh, uh, yesterday there was an attack in Shishenia. Four filthy terrorists they enter a Christian church in Shishenia, an Orthodox Christian church. And they killed two policemen and they took all the Christians hostages. But thanks God, they got killed before they were able to kill anyone. Additional to the two, pol two police, actually two police and one Christian person get killed, which means three. I don't see it here. So obviously this map is not updated. All what it says here is some, let us say here, this is some of the numbers. This is not the true numbers. But even if it is some and not totally update, the number is a scary. Is 515 attacks and 2,695 people get killed by those counted ones, which means, as we mentioned to you, there's many are not counted for yet. 2,695 people killed in a few months in the month and in, in the in the year of. 2018 while your TV station busy talking about stupid things and while people around the world watching silly stuff we cannot count my friend we cannot count how many terrorist attack this is impossible because you see there is many attacks they are not even reported terrorism terrorism is a lifestyle in Islamic countries you see you know uh, the world always consider terrorism uh, they have their own definition but the fact terrorism is, is 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 not what they say to us as an example in Saudi Arabia if you say a word against Islam, they will slaughter you. This is terrorism happened by the government and nobody talk about it. If somebody in those countries says I am an atheist, they will kill him. That is terrorism. If, she, if a woman, she leave her husband's house in Saudi Arabia without his permission, he can call the police for her and she get arrested. This is terrorism. Terrorism is not only what they report for us here about people getting killed. Terrorism is a way of life in Islamic countries. Say one word against the filthy Muhammad in Islamic countries, and you will see the real terrorism in a second. You will see that everyone, everyone, every citizen there suddenly he is a terrorist.
terrorism have many faces and me myself I get terror they try to terrify me in YouTube and they keep sending me warning and restriction from broadcasting this is terrorism they try to silence you they try to shut you up terrorism have many faces when you make a law in a country it says that the man he can beat his wife this is the law of terrorism you are terrifying a woman and making the man able to beat her legally officially and nobody even can speak about it when a father he beat his children's sometime even to death and in Islamic countries he have the right to do so that is terrorism When somebody he cannot join a school just because he's a Christian or he is an atheist That is terrorism When a woman she can't drive a car because she is a female as we see in Saudi Arabia for the last 200 years That is terrorism Because if she do she will be beaten and she will be arrested. This is terrifying This is this, this is this is the purpose of all those laws is to terrify you and to make you scared so you will not do what they want you not to do. Terrorism is a way of life in the world. It is a daily practice. Most of the world is a practice in it and nobody is talking about it. You cannot criticize Islam in many places in this earth. That is terrorism. Why? Why you can criticize everybody except Islam? Why the second you speak about this filthy cult, you are a hate monger and you are a person who teach hate? It's a religion who says clearly that Allah, he hate all of us and he want to kill us, all of us, but yet you cannot, and you have no right to speak about it. We need, we need to free ourselves from any fear in order to fight this cult and to fight the ones who sponsor this cult. As an example, there is there is an, a politician in Germany. He said he he is asking the 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 government of Germany to accept Islam as part of the society. I mean, what does that mean? That's mean that from now on he wants the government of Germany to pay for the mosques in Germany, to pay for the salaries of imam in Germany, which means you German people you pay tax. And your tax will go to build mosque and those mosques will teach people to hate you and then to attack you but we did not hear any German leader saying the same for Christians or Hindus or Buddha people why Islam only because all of those are corrupt people and they are under the influence of the money you know when you see a gathering of 10,000 Muslims in the street to pray in the street do you think this is a peaceful prayer or this is to terrify the citizen the citizen of this can of this uh, city the purpose is to terrify you they are telling you look how how many we are not only we are many but we can gather together you cannot do that maybe you are majority but we will not find ten of thousand of you standing in front of us it is to terrify you what is the purpose of Muslims gathering by thousands and praying in the middle of a small town to terrify the town to intimidate you and to make you live in fear and then you become subdued fear is the method of victory in Islam you see when the Muslims they practice terror 
their terror having happened for a reason it's not really it's not for fun it is a tactic and a strategy their master which means the master of the Muslims his name is Muhammad as you know and he said I was victorious by terror I was victorious by terror not by anything else by terror and terror is very powerful if you can scare the civilian if you remember a few years ago there was a terrorist Muslim who is uh, known as New York sniper this Muslim he just have a gun that's it he don't have an army he don't have anything it's just a gun however this terrorist he shoot anyone walking in the street and he disappeared so he installed terror in the heart of a city have eight nine million people one guy because you do not know you walk in the street you might feel dead this guy he sits somewhere in the middle of nowhere and he have us in the sniper machine and he shoot you from far away and he run he shoot anyone you do not you do not need to know who you are it's just just to scare the hell of everybody as you see here Muhammad himself speaking about terror he was you see the Muslims they try to give you a false translation of the terrorism of Islam they say to you uh, uh, I was victorious by Awi of frightening my enemies what's fine it's by terror he was victorious by terror I was help this is a translation which is false the text says I was victorious again I was victorious by terror so terrorism is not a temporary act in the cult of Islam terrorism is a strategic war plan in order to conquer they practice terror in the other side the Muslims will work as a scissor you know the scissor the one you cut things with one side of the scissor is sharp and practice terror the other one play the good cup and the bad cup you know what I mean the other one will say to you, oh, this is not Islam. But what is the point of this? The point of this is to say to you, well, if you want to negotiate, we cannot negotiate with the terrorist because this is the bad cup. Negotiate with the good one, but the good one, actually, they are the one who present the terrorist. It's just to fool you. It's the same as like the Muslims Brotherhood and ISIS. Obama he tried to present to us and Hillary Clinton the Muslim Brotherhood as a good civil citizens who they are just organization they are seeking political agenda like everybody not a big deal the fact the Muslim Brotherhood are an armed force and they have subdivisions for arm and armies like Hamas as an example the 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 uh, brigade it's called uh rahman is one of these biggest biggest brigade have more than seventy thousand fighter this is the muslim brotherhood and hamas and they have more than eighty thousand fighter inside egypt and the egyptian government with the huge army this country has because remember egypt is a 100 million citizen country yet they have hard time to stop the terror of those organization there terrorism is not something temporarily and is going to increase and it's going to increase for many reasons number one you don't have a brave politician to say or to name the name of the enemy 
like Trump, he was accused to be a racist. He hate Muslim just because he says uh, simple things. I mean, this guy is just being a little bit honest. He is not totally still honest. He is still being a politician. He's just said little of the honesty, and they were eating him alive. Your enemy is not the terrorist only who you see. We name him as Muhammad and the cult which we are talking about. The terrorists are those terrorism or those terrorist uh, uh, organization and the media in the West who they try to silence anyone who say the truth and they accuse him right away of racism, hatred, etc. When Trump, he said, I'm going to ban six countries, all of them, they are Islamic from entering the country. Go and see how many articles written about the hatred Trump he have to Muslims. How filthy this man is, but the same numbers, the same countries was banned from entering USA by Obama. Not a single article is written against Obama. The same numbers. In fact, Trump, he just renew the ban. He did not create the ban. So the political agenda is an agenda of sponsoring terror. A few days ago, a journalist from Washington Post, he made an article saying that we should bomb, listen to this, we should bomb the bridge which the Russian built between Russia and Crimea. I mean, wow, what a wonderful people are. There is a guy, I forgot his name, he said that in order to fight Islam, you need to bomb Mecca. I don't agree with that for sure. Uh, but you can imagine how many people, they went all over him and they want to eat him alive. Why it is not okay to say for this man, and by the way, I'm against what he said again, not because Mecca is something you know, good for me, but I believe that will not solve a problem. However, we should not attack anyone, any country, unless they are attacking us. As simple as that. But if the bridge of Russia is a Muslim bridge, do you think the journalist in Washington post will say let us bomb this bridge why it's okay to bomb a bridge made by the russian built by the russian and what is the consequence of that and what is the result of that and what we will earn from that and who is the stupid in the world is going to listen and do that when a guy he made a movie about muhammad Muslims they strike and they burn flags and they attack churches and etc. for making a short five ten minute movie about Muhammad. And they told us that the ambassador of USA in Libya was killed because of that movie, which is false. How come? We should not make a movie like this, but we can bomb a country, and this country is a super powerful country which it can destroy us with no mercy. What I'm trying to tell you that the media in your country is a media of terror and stupidity. They sponsor terror in one hand, they forbid you from speaking about what is really scary. And they try to take your attention to different kind of enemy. You notice in USA, they try to create an enemy for us. Its name or the name of this enemy is Russia. And the fact is that Western countries are the one who sponsor everyone want to fight Russia. Our beloved president George Bush, the scumbag, he did invite the Mujahideen who killed more a thousand child in a school in Russia. 
and he called them rebels and they were invited to the White House. 1,000 child and teachers killed in a school. America invited the criminals to the White House, called them heroes. Who is the one who is sponsoring terrorism? And who is the one is fighting terrorism? The truth is, if not Russia fought against terrorists in Syria, all the Christians today in Syria will be slaughtered. While Obama was arming the terrorists and Al-Qaeda and ISIS in Syria, the Russians, they were fighting them and killing them. But in the same time, they want to give you wrong information that Russian are the one who sponsored terrorists. Russian are our enemy. They want to. They, they don't want to tell you that our enemy really is the Islamic terrorist. This is the real enemy. Why we cannot be friends with the Russian and both of us we fight the one enemy we face? For a very simple reason, Islamic government are involved in every government in the West, including Trump government. You see, I voted for Trump, but not because he's a good guy. And I know he is not a good guy. But because he is the best between the worst. I know that Trump, he worship money. And he don't believe in God. I know that Trump, he don't care about fighting Islam. I know that he have a very strong relationship and business with all Islamic countries. I know that for sure they are involved even in his election. But those government, they are involved in everybody election. They are the one who made Sarkozy a president. They are the one who made Macron a president. They are the one who made Berlusconi a president. And I will not be surprised if the Muslims, they pump a lot of money in Trump election, not because they like Trump, but because they have a strategy. I have a family member once who is a businessman and he donate money to four people who they are going for the position of mayor. And I ask him, why, why you donate to all of them? I mean, which one you support? He said, I support none. But I donate to all, so whoever going to win, he will be in my pocket. So they don't support Trump because they like Trump. They support Hillary Clinton, and they support Trump, so whoever win will be in their pocket. And this is why you will see that your politicians, they avoid to say anything is a truthful about Islam because they are involved to their noses with the money of Muslims countries. The Queen of England, she go every few months to the Middle East and she like to visit very much the Sultan of Oman. I mean, you tell me, what the Queen of England she share with this Bedouin man? What exactly they share together? The camel? The tent? They don't share anything. The religion? The history? They talk about philosophy? Even the guy don't speak English. Why she want to keep going there? Because each time she go, they shower her with diamonds and gold. This is why you see that Hillary Clinton in the last few years she flied tons of times to the Middle East. Bill Clinton, his favorite job is to make speeches in wedding party for Muslims. So we have to take into consideration that those people they don't speak anything truthful about anything happening around you, including Islam, for they are getting paid by Muslims. You see, 
when you look at uh, Trump right now, his uh, son-in-law, who is a Jewish businessman, his company facing a very harsh time. And I just got the news that his company is going to be saved by the government of Qatar money. The government of Qatar, they have a company which is investing company, but the fact it's invest to control. In other way, it is the lobby of the Muslims, specifically the Muslims Brotherhood. This guy is facing almost bankruptcy and the Qatari are going to save him. Now, do you think this guy is a qualified to be in the White House or even clothed? Do you think that Trump, he do not know about it? Do you think that this is not a bribe to Trump? Do you think the government of Qatar, they will give their money to the son of law of someone for no reason? For no return? All of them are corrupt. And they make me truly sick. We say, we hope that Trump, he will not be the same as the rest, but I don't see that. The guy, he go in TV and he made a speech about the government of Qatar, that they are sponsoring terrorism. Less than 10 days after, he sold them more than 30 airplanes. How you say they are sponsoring terrorists and how you sell them airplanes? How they are sponsoring terrorists and you are protecting their government by preventing the Saudi from invading Qatar. How they are sponsoring ISIS and Al Qaeda. And you say that loud in TV. I mean, the American, they are, they are people with short memory. Nobody's asking the president now, what happened to your speech about Qatar sponsoring terrorism? Like, what happened exactly? Did you arrest the prince? Shouldn't we, as USA, Capture this prince and bring him to justice. You just admitted and you said in TV that he is a sponsoring ISIS, sponsoring Osama bin Laden groups and Al Qaeda. So, why you are welcoming him to come to the White House and you give him a hug just a week after? Liars, fake people actors businessmen this is what your world is about everything is for sale everything is for sale Yeah, we have a Muslim here. He's trying to play games, my friend, with you. Don't listen to him. I will ban him. We have no time for kids. You can tell right away when a Muslim, he play games. He tries just to make you fight as a Catholic and Protestant. So don't be a donkey. A shoe of a Catholic is better than the face of your prophet. And a flip a flap of a Protestant is better than your Quran. This is how you answer them. Learn. A prophet who cannot enjoy his life and he cannot make victory except by terror. How he terrify his army or his enemy? By raping women, killing children, burning, even the graves they use to dig it. That is Muhammad. And Muhammad only, by the way, not only he used terror, Muhammad, if he is weak, he used different method. If you go in the Quran, you will see the Quran is speaking about a group of people which Muhammad, he bribed in order to make them join him in his propaganda. The Quran, 
uh, speak about a group of people who Muhammad he bought them he paid them money chapter 9 verse number 60 is speaking about spending money from the booty and what the Muslims stole from their enemies to convert people or to make people sponsor Islam and you will see this is the story which speak about Abu Sufyan <coughs> sorry Abu Sufyan who was a man and his family they are warriors and they don't like Islam and they knew Muhammad is a scumbag so what Muhammad he did he bought him he gave every one of his family 100 camel and four ounce of gold and silver and money more gifts the purpose was if I can make this guy accept Islam by buying his heart do you see it we buy their heart and you can go by the way we can go to the to uh, uh, to uh, the interpretation of this verse and you will see that this is what it is about chapter 9 verse number 60 here you will see look what it says uh, To reconcile so that they might become a Muslim. So Muhammad he paid them money so they might become a Muslim. Or that Islam might be firmly established that their peers might become Muslims or that they might defend Muslims, all of whom are uh, uh, readers. So what what the what the story here? We pay those people in order to protect Islam. For they are a bunch of uh, criminals. We hire gang. This is a family who they are criminals, killers. They love to say to 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 share the blood. We hire them, and we pay them in order to gain support of a bunch of uh, criminals. And this is a practice Muhammad he used when he cannot use terror. You see, he is not powerful enough to conquer those people. So what he do? He bought them. This is why they buy your presidents and your government. So the Muslims always they have two way in order to accomplish their mission. Either we use terror. But if we cannot use terror, then we buy you. Let us see if you have anything to offer for sale. As you see here, it says, and those who heart, whose heart are to be reconciled by giving them gifts such as Abu Sufyan and his companions. They were 15 men. They are 15 men, but those 15 men, they control a huge number of people and they are very powerful. So Muhammad, he paid them money in return to say we are Muslims. And the funny, the Muslims, they say to you, the reason Islam is growing in Africa because you Christians giving sandwiches to Muslims the fact this is not true I met a woman from Al Bosnia and her name is a Muslim name you know for me I'm an as a, as a person from the Middle East right away I know if you are a Muslim or not if you use an Islamic name we as an Arab Christians we don't use Islamic names we are Arab yes but we don't use Islamic names there's name there's names we don't even touch like Muhammad Ahmad Khalid etc there's many names so the second she said her name to me I, I know right away that she is a Muslim so I said to her so you are a Muslim right she said I used to be 
I said, really? So what happened? She said, uh, long story. I said, like, yeah, did you speak to someone? He taught you about Christ, etc. She said, no, no, not really. This is not the reason I left Islam. Uh, and then I said, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to listen if you like to tell. I was interested to know what make this woman leave Islam. She said that during the war in Bosnia, there was an Islamic aid camp, Islamic aid camp, who provide food, money, uh, fuel, uh, medicine, etc. So this woman, this poor woman, she have a bunch of kids. All of them, they are very young. It's a war time, you know. It doesn't matter really if you are a Muslim or a Christian. We feel sorry for everybody suffering in such in such a war. So this woman, she she live in an Islamic territory because she's a Muslim. So she went to the Saudi camp, which is Islamic camp, and uh, she waited in the line for few five uh, five six hours, as I remember she said, and then finally her turn come. And the guy in the front of the tent, he said to her, we cannot give you any assistant unless you wear a hijab. Go and teach yourself a good manner and come back. So he kicked her out because she is not wearing hijab. This poor woman, she did go all the way again to the end. They told her, wait until this guy leave. And then you come. By the by the time your turn would come, he will he will be gone. A new guy will, will take over, you know, the, to, to give assistance. So she lined up again and her kids with her, and it's cold, snow, very cold. And this time she borrowed a hijab. So now she is okay. And when her turn arrived, the guy he asked her child, who is very young, he said to her, Do your mom pray to Allah? That child, he is honest. He said no. The Saudi guy, he said to her, "Well, this is a camp to help the Muslims, and obviously you don't pray to Allah. You are not a Muslim. Get out of here." The poor woman, crying, hungry, she did not know what to do, and her poor son, he did not know what he did. He just made himself suffer, and maybe they will die. So she decided to walk to the other side of the town where is a Christian camp in the Christian territory asking for help. So she walked risking her life because this is a war time and she is a Muslim and now she is going to a Christian area, which means she might be captured because they might think she's a spy or something or even be maybe shot in the, during walking between the two lines. She walked all the way the Serbian soldiers let her go through. They did not stop her. Her and her children. And then she went to the Christian assistant camp. And nobody asked her, what is your religion? What is your name? Who is your God? Do you pray or you don't pray? All what they did, they check her, uh, her, her children if they have any illness. They give them uh, uh, blankets. They give them a tent to stay in temporarily until they move them to a better location. And they give them the medicine. They give them the food. They give they, they give them everything and not even a single question. What is your religion? And this is why this woman, she left Islam. She said, if this God will not help me unless I pray for him, and there's a God who loves me even if I don't pray for him. Even if my children, when they grow, they might kill his, the, the, his followers. He still loves me and he helped me. This is the God I want to be with. And now, her and her children, all of them, they are Christians. And they are from Al-Bosnia. And her kids, they have Muslim names. So our topic today is very simple. The world is getting more and more ugly. And those Muslims following the cult of Islam, they are going to go more and more aggressive. 
but that will not change anything Islam is losing ground everywhere you see what Muslims miss that Muhammad was able to conquer and force people into Islam but Muslims most of them don't believe in Islam because they've been forced to in order to know how many Muslims exist in Iraq give them freedom and let us see in order to know how many Muslims exist in Pakistan give them freedom and you will see and that goes etc 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 most of Muslims even the one who defend Islam he want a version of Islam which we can drink we can smoke we can dance we can love our neighbor we can be nice to Christians and Jews M most of Muslims they want that but this is not Islam and that is telling us that Islam fail to accomplish the mission of hate you see when they say to you that there is only 10 percent of the Muslims they sponsor terrorism that means there is only 10 percent of Muslims are Muslims you know what I mean because why only 10 percent of the Muslims they sponsor terrorism if Islam is based on terrorism if Muhammad himself is a terrorist why only 10 percent they sponsor Muhammad lifestyle because simply only 10 percent of the Muslims are true Muslims the rest are forced to live under the title of Islam only the true Muslims are the one who sponsor jihad and killing the rest they don't for simply they are not Muslims you see when when the Muslims attack the Kurdish and the Kurdish by name they are Muslims the Kurdish actually the leader of the Kurdish you know what his name his name is Muslim the leader of the Kurdish in in Syria his name is Muslim Muslim his, this is his first name yet they attack them and they praise Allah for killing them why because the, the, the those Kurdish don't pray to Allah their women don't wear hijab they are you know they don't really care at all for Islam they believe Islam is a stupid religion therefore it was okay to attack them and kill them and this is why Erdogan he did not find any Muslims argue and I'm talking about the terrorists like him argue against him that you should not attack the Kurdish because simply they are Muslims how come we don't see any Muslim striking and saying and condemning Erdogan for bombing cities full of Muslims how come if Israel shoot at Hamas The Islamic propaganda go crazy. Why shooting at the Kurdish is okay, but shooting at Hamas is not okay? Because the ten percent of the Muslims who they are sponsoring terrorists like Erdogan, they believe that the ninety percent of the Muslims should die, and they don't have a problem to kill them all. There is a war happened after Muhammad death. It's called the War of Apostate. What is the War of Apostate? Simply, after Muhammad died, more than 90% of Muslims, they left Islam. In other words, they don't want to practice Islam. They don't want to pay the zakat. They don't want to do anything like this. So what Abu Bakr he did he took an oath by Allah I'm going to kill them all even if it is about paying zakat and even if the zakat is a goat a little tiny goat still I will go for a war for it
this is how Islam stay you see people they say Muhammad he established Islamic State Muhammad failed it is not Muhammad who established the Islamic State it's people who after him by terror killing the enemy and because the enemy not was was not too much united against the gang of Muhammad the gang of Muhammad we are able to conquer Otherwise, right away when Muhammad died, the same day Muhammad died, people they left Islam. Imagine how much they hated Islam. And the war of upper state is not one war, it's wars. It's wars, and it happened even in the time of Muhammad himself. Which means the war of apostates started even before Muhammad died and continue after Muhammad died. But after Muhammad's death became bigger because more and more people left Islam. Terror is not a sign of a strength of this cult. It is a sign of weakness. And the more it increases, the more is going to be left behind. There is some naive Muslims, they don't want to believe that Islam is a disgusting religion. Because, you know, they are nice people who live peacefully. They don't want to kill anyone. Like everybody, you know, we are a human being. We like to have a family, friends. Uh, come over, let us talk, have a coffee, barbecue. A normal human being society. And they are like us. So, those kind of Muslims, they cannot believe what they saw is done by the hand of Isis because they never read what their prophet did what they've been taught about their prophet is far away from what their prophet is about so when Isis come to existence and Isis start using technology to tape the terror they do those Muslims they were terrified themselves. This is cannot be Islam. There is no way that Islam approves such a thing. There is no way the Prophet he will teach us such a thing. So they went in denial. But slowly, slowly they start noticing that this is exactly who is Muhammad, and ISIS actually are nice people compared to Muhammad. Uh, someone asking me have you ever thought about getting volunteer to promote my channel my friend uh, Anyone want to promote what we do is more than welcome good things do not need to ask for it You know what I mean if you think what we do here is very important feel free and promote it Help us. Thank you very much Someone saying Islam will win the war with the Christianity. My friend, Islam is not even winning the war within itself. Islam is self-destruction. What are you talking about? Islam is the end of itself. You have no idea what are you talking about. I, I will give an example. Who is winning the war in Libya? Who is fighting the Mujahideen in Libya? Muslims. Who is fighting the Mujahideen in Algeria? Muslims. Who is fighting the Mujahideen in Iraq? Muslims. Who is fighting the Mujahideen in Syria? Muslims. Afghanistan? Muslims. Pakistan? Muslims. Indonesia? Muslim. My friend, you are an ignorant person. You have no idea what are you talking about. Islam cannot even escape fighting itself, so how it can win against anyone? Are you guys getting my point? Increasing what? What are you talking about? You have no idea what are you talking about? What increasing? What in number? No, we are the biggest belief in this earth. China is the coming giant Christian country. I was in China just a few months ago. 
and Chinese convert into Christianity is like ocean and the Chinese government is terrified because they are losing communism not because Christians are a threat and they are terrorists no but because communism is dying China is the biggest a Christian country in the world is going to be actually already it's a, a go and see you have no idea what's happening my friend Indonesia the one it is the biggest Islamic country is losing its faith to Christianity do you know how many Indonesian they converted to Christianity just in the last 10 years you have no idea what are you talking about you are fooled by some videos Muslims they post for you about redhead blue eye women she converted to Islam because she married a Muslim husband we have tens of thousands according to Al Jazeera TV 16,000 Muslims leave in Islam a day to Christianity a day in one territory only But we will not see a Jazeera make an interview with any of those who left uh, Islam to Christianity because those Christians did will not agree. For they knew that we will be killed. You know, you are an ex-Muslim now. Islam is dying as a religion. Terrorism is increasing as a result. You see why the Muslims attack Christian in Indonesia? Do you know the real reason? Because they feel that Christianity is a threat. Are you getting the point? If we Christians are not a threat to Islam, then why you attack us? We are nothing. If the Muslims are winning, as you say, by number, then what the point of killing yourself to kill a few Christians? I mean, they are they are gone anyway. But because Christianity is taking over Islamic countries. Buddha's countries, even India, Christianity is the biggest it is now and is going to be the largest soon when China and India and Thailand, you know, I, 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 went, I went to all those countries in Asia, including Thailand. I was really surprised to see how many churches there are there. Islam is not growing in those countries. Islam is dying. For the local, the, the native people there, they don't like Islam. They know Islam is a violent, disgusting religion. If you go to Asia, you do not need to discuss with people to tell them Islam is a bad religion, right? Because they suffer from it. In India alone, more than 90 million Hindu killed by the Islamic terrorism. 90 million, not 9 million. Islam, my friend, it's, it's seeking its death. It's dying. Don't make anyone fool you and say Islam is growing. Those propaganda is false. They are talking about birth number, but who said that those are Muslims? Who said that if somebody is born of a Muslim, is a Muslim? I remember when I was in the Middle East, there's a guy from a Muslim Sunni family. He said to me something, and at that time, I thought maybe he is trying to to make me to, he, he's trying to say something so I will say something so he will know what I really believe about Islam he said to me we Muslims have faith but we don't have religion and you Christians you have religion but you don't have faith I said where you learn this from he said my dad told me and I thought about it deeply he is saying that his dad said to him that we Muslims have faith but we don't have religion your Christians have a religion but you don't have faith hmm that is very dangerous anyone understand what he what this Muslim said anyone understand what this how dangerous what he said he just told us that they have faith in something stupid in something false we are the one who have the true thing, but you guys don't have faith.
You are the one who have the true Messiah, but you don't have faith. We are the one who have the false Muhammad, but we have faith. This is what he just said. He just admitted that Islam is a false religion. But then I said to myself, he just if he just admitted, and this is what his family believe, that Islam is a religion based on faith, but no religion is based on, then their faith is a lie, and they knew that. So their faith is fake. It's an act. You know what I mean? Because as long as you know that, how you can say, I have faith, how you can say that we Muslims have faith if you just told me that your faith is in something false so your faith is not true and you know that and you confess to that to that idea but yet you are saying to me I have faith that that's that you're, it's just you're fooling yourself which means they worship Allah by their lips but in their heart they knew that there is no religion to believe in they have faith by their lips but they don't believe in it. So Islam is a dead religion, and there's no question about that. It doesn't, guys. If you if you go and check how much money is invested to keep Islam alive, you will not believe it. More than ten percent of the budget of Saudi Arabia goes. To Islam inside the country and another 10% of the budget of Saudi Arabia go to invest in Islam abroad that is 20% of one of the most rich countries in the world to sponsor Islam that's only in Saudi Arabia I'm not going to mention how much Kuwait spend how much Qatar spend how much all of them they are filthy rich so we are talking about a religion has official government budget to sponsor it and we are talking about christianity who we don't have not even one official government is sponsoring our faith do you see the difference all the islamic sheikhs or missionaries are paid salary by government high salary all the mosque built in Europe is built by the money of Saudi Arabia government and Qatar and Emirat and Kuwait and Bahrain. Our churches is built by our money. USA government don't build churches for us. England don't build the churches for us. Germany don't build the churches for us. We pay for our churches, we pay for electricity, we pay for employees, we pay for cleaning, we pay for everything. In their places of worship and propaganda, everything paid by government. 100,000 copy printed and delivered in one week in Germany for free. And then they printed another 100,000 the second week. And then 100,000 the third week until they notice people are not taking the books no more. All those books printed by the money of the Saudi, Saudi government. So this religion with all the support of the money, which is a huge support, still is not able to do any success. You see the Muslims, they say to us that last year in America about 18,000 people converted to Islam in America. That's nothing. 18,000? That is nothing compared to the money you spend. Same time, how many thousand they left Islam in America last year? How many Muslims they are disgusted of Islam last year? And even those who convert to Islam, they leave Islam in an average of three years. There was an, a conference, I think it was in Chicago or Michigan, I forgot. Uh, uh, and one of you have a recording of it. We play it before in Palto. Uh, they were discussing why those convert who convert to Islam, they live in an average of two or three years maximum. The answer is very simple. Muslims, they lie to people to lie to Western about Islam. Western convert. A year or two or three after, those Western, they noticed that they've been fooled. What they taught about Islam is not what Islam is about. So they leave Islam again. 
the only one who stayed as a Muslim is the one you give them a job as an example you make them an uh, a person who do missionary and you give him a salary to stay for the rest of life under the control of the money of the Muslims like uh, this guy his name is Yusuf state who know nothing about Islam he's an idiot even he said in TV his wife she used to call him useless before he became a Muslim after he became a Muslim he is Yusuf state before he became a Muslim he was useless why because he have no job he lie he says he was a minister for youth what minister for youth what does that mean which church Islam is losing ground big deal if you see how many Muslims are buying my books you will not believe it you see the fact is the most of those who buy my books to read them are Muslims Shabir Ali and all of you you know him he bought my books can you tell me why Shabir Ali want to buy my books anyone can give me a reason what Shabir Ali needs for my books if he is a person who have faith and his faith is strong and I challenge him to say he did not we are doing a great work and Islam is losing ground like crazy I am not really worried about tomorrow however that will not stop me from doing putting more nails in the coffin of the cult of Islam for this is a duty we should do is to share education and the education will be carried on from generation to generation time will come and I will die and that is very normal it will happen to everybody but then before that day happened I want to be sure that there's a lot of a Christian Prince around many of them who they have the knowledge and they can make Islam look as it is a joke a cult a stupid filthy hateful violent religion this mission will continue and when we say Islam is losing doesn't mean Islam is going to disappear tomorrow absolutely not but Islam is dead already can you tell me why Islamic countries don't want to practice Sharia law anyone because remember Islam is not just a religion Islam is a cult base on forcing itself why the Muslims are the first one to reject to practice the law of Allah if the law of Allah is convincing for them that this is the perfect way to live any Muslim can tell me why the Muslims don't want to practice Islamic Sharia law in Morocco in Algeria in Tunisia in Libya in Egypt in Syria in Jordan in Iraq in 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 in, in. why anyone can tell me that that is a clear sign that Islam is collapsing it's dead you see Isis what what is the request of Isis anyone can tell me what is the what is the purpose of Isis what Isis want Isis want to establish an Islamic state practicing the Sharia law is that correct this is the target and the aim of Isis <laughs> but that's mean that's mean all the Muslims they say to us Isis is not Islam is that correct how many times we heard Muslims saying Isis is not Islam if the if Isis who want to establish Islamic law is not Islam so what Islam we is left Are you getting my point? That means Muslims are against Islam. 
So we are fighting Islam together side by side with the Muslims. This is the truth. Muslim themselves, the majority of Muslims don't want Muhammad, don't want the law of Allah, they don't want Sharia law, they, they spit on it and they hate it. And this is why they are fighting side by side with us against Allah. Actually, Muslims are the best fighters against Allah. Because it is not France who is forcing anyone not to practice Sharia law in their Islamic countries. It is the Muslim themselves. Algeria, Algeria lost more than a million people get killed fighting the cult of Islam and nobody talk about it. Do you know that? More than a million. In the last 10 years but as we know Algeria is a Muslim country but they don't want Sharia law same as in Libya who is in Libya now fighting the Mujahideen people of Libya but people of Libya are Muslims who is fighting the Mujahideen in Afghanistan the government of oh sorry in, in Indonesia same in Pakistan. I mean, what is wrong? What's the problem? Why, why Muslims fighting those who want to establish the Sharia law? What is the problem? The problem is very simple. The Muslims don't want Sharia law in their countries. And that means Islam fail to establish itself in the land. The Muslim themselves, they don't want this religion to be their religion they are just keeping the name we respect the prophet we love the prophet we love allah but in fact nobody really care for islam not even for a second if you go to indonesia you will find that they have the biggest night clubs ever you can imagine i met with a guy he is from North Africa and he worked as a manager. He told me he worked as a manager. You know, I met him like, you know, overseas. So I asked him, so what do you, you know, he asked me, what do you do? I asked him, what do you do? He said, uh, I am a manager, you know, for like entertainment place. I said, what kind of entertainment place? He said, uh, it's like, uh, it's like a night club. I said, really? Where? He said, in Indonesia. Oh, Indonesia? For me, I never heard that Indonesia and they have night clubs there. As I know that I thought Indonesia, you know, like they are very strictly Muslims, as I thought because people wear hijab and blah, blah, blah. He said, no, no, no. Actually, actually, the night club there is like a stadium and it is run uh, like uh, running by the government, by the army, protected by the army. This is what he said. I never, you know, I, me, myself, I never been in Indonesia before. And he said, you know, if you go inside, like it is, it is a huge, huge. It's not like normal night clubs you see in, in anywhere. It's different. It's like endless place. Well, I, I never been in Indonesia, so I don't know. I don't know. So he told me it is like uh, he told me like inside people they do anything. I said like what? He said drugs, uh, sex, uh, etc. I don't know if he's saying the truth or not, but he is a Muslim. He's not speaking to me as a Muslim. He's speaking. To, he's a Muslim, but he is telling me what he do for a living. He is a manager of those places, and he said inside you can see you can do whatever you wish. Whatever you wish. I said whatever I wish. He said whatever you wish. You know. So, the lifestyle of Islamic countries is again additional reason to believe that Islam is not exist. In their countries because as you know music is haram or which means forbidden in Islamic countries according to Muhammad uh, drinking is haram smoking is haram saying poetry is haram TV is haram radio is haram anything except reciting Quran and praising Muhammad is forbidden to make it simple 
So why the Muslims in their countries they have the opposite lifestyle? There is an actor in Egypt. His name is uh, Adel Imam. You know this guy is a funny guy. Everybody, all the Muslims, they know him. You know, I mean, we are not. This is he's a Muslim. He's a comedian. So in the in the in his comedy act, the judge here asked him. The story is simple. Like he, uh, a belly dancer, she she was killed in the flat down underneath of him. So the judge he said to him. After you learned that the one who is your neighbor next to you is a belly dancer, why you did not move out? He said to him, sir, if every Egyptian will move because his neighbor is a belly dancer, will we have to move all of us out of the country? <laughs> this is the truth. If every Egyptian will move out of the country because there is a Billy Dancer next to him. Well, all of us, we have to move out of Egypt. But look, Egypt is the land of the Muslims' brotherhood. Egypt is the land of the Mujahideen. Egypt is the land of Al-Zawahiri. But Egypt is the land of Billy Dancing. Hashish, hookah, Billy dancing, whiskey, nightclubs, you name it. So when people they speak about Islam is growing, you are fooling yourself. Islam is dead. To have Islam or to consider Islam as a religion is exist. We have to find Islam in the practice. Even in Saudi Arabia right now, we have a big revolution against Islam. The crown prince of Saudi Arabia, who is going to be the coming king soon, he is moving fast to get rid of Islam. Women, they can drive. Women, they can run in the street. You believe it? This is in Saudi Arabia. You might laugh now, like what a big deal, right? My friend, this is a big deal. That's mean those people, they are they are done with it. That's it. We are sick of this stupid cult. We are done. That's it. We don't want more of it. But in the outside, they say, oh, no, no. We love Islam. But hold on. We follow the prophet, but women should drive. And women, they should do jogging and walk alone in the street and women they can soon swim with the bikini just wait what's coming in the coming 20 years you will see a huge change changing in saudi arabia imagine in saudi arabia now they have a movie theater we are talking about a country the first time they have a bicycle the bike was arrested and accused to be the bike of the devil They arrested the bike. I mean, have you ever heard of somebody arresting a bike? We never saw a bike before, and they accuse it to be the bike of the devil. And they cut the head of the bike. They brought a guy to cut the head of the bike. He could not get it from the first sword because the sword is broken. If we go right now, and we search in YouTube for video about Dubai, Dubai nightlife. What you will see? Go and see. What Dubai is an Islamic country? Are you sure? What is Islamic about Dubai? So they try to fool you by numbers saying uh, Islam is growing. This is just those, those numbers mean nothing. Islam actually is dead.
Dubai is, fi is filled with monotheists. Yeah, this is why we find them in the night club, right? Dubai is filled with monotheists. This is why the night clubs are full. You are right. And Saudi Arabia is filled with monothe monotheists because this is why we don't find any Saudi left in Ramadan in Saudi Arabia. All of them, they go to Asia, to Thailand, to Philippines, seeking sex tourism. All of you are monotheists. Uh, unbelievable. All of you Muslims are monotheists. And you know what? You know what? When the Muslims speak about monotheism, the Allah, I mean, who cares if you worship one God or two God, you stupid idiot. What you worship is a stupid. Have you ever heard of a God? He have two legs in the in the right side. Have you ever heard of a God? He have two hands in the right side. How he can even walk? So you worship one God or two God or three God. This is a stupid statement to say because let us say for sake of argument, there's five gods. So what that will change? If there's only one God or two God, your God is funny. He's a stupid. Have you ever heard of a God? He says, if I want to have sex, I'm going to have sex with the Huri. And he called the Huri ourself. That's mean he's a man because the Hur are women. So you believe in one God, but your God is an idiot, a stupid. And your God, actually, he's very funny. Guys, there is a video. It's called uh, The Description of Paradise. I advise you. I wish I can play it here because if you play it, you will die from death and you will have heart attack. Especially if it comes with my comment. I played this video in a churches in the Philippines. In one occasion, there's, there's a there's a guy, uh, his name is Richard. He was laughing, you know, like if you see how he was. <laughs> anyway, the line the line be, be behind this man, uh, he was laughing so crazy. Everybody is laughing so crazy, and there's a they, you know they lost control of how much they laugh. They are laughing. People are are crying. They are not just laughing. They are crying. However, one of them, he lost control. You know, they are sitting in plastic uh, chairs. So he lost control of himself when he is laughing. So he fell down in his back. When he fell down, he opened his arms. And then the whole line fell down with him. The name of the video, The Description of Paradise by the Dean Show. Watch it. Actually, you know what? I'm going to make a video of it. But I will not post it on my YouTube because they will, they will flag me for copyright. I will post it in minds.com. I will do that. And you will die from laughing. It is the most hilarious com comedy ever you can imagine. Uh, my Skype is not open. Hold on. <coughs> All right, let's see. Yeah, now we are on. <laughs> yeah, my Skype is on. I will make a video about this. It's going to be a series of videos because uh, uh, every every two minute of it is a joke by itself. Do we have any Muslim here? You don't agree with us? We are worshiping one plus one plus one. That's very funny. It is you who worship one plus one plus one. Do you want me to prove it to you? Let me show you. Let me show you, my friend. Who is the one who worship one plus one plus one from your Quran? Chapter 1, verse number 1 in the Quran. 
Bism in the name of Allah, okay, and Ar Rahman, okay, and Ar Rahim. Who are the those three? Any Muslim want to tell me? Who are they? Those three names. Who is the Muslim want to answer me? Oh, there's no screen. Hold on, sorry. All right. Do you see now my screen? The Muslims, they believe in a God, but this God, he pr produced himself in three names. Allah, Al-Rahman, Al-Rahim. If you believe in one God, why he is presented with the three names? Who is the Muslim want to answer? Anyone? Is that one plus one plus one? If your God Allah is one, how come he is presenting himself in three? Same time, what kind of a stupid God he says in the name of Allah, Al-Rahman, because Bism means in the name. Bism, which is wrong by the way, Bism, this is a wrong Arabic word, it is Bism. Bism, Allah, Al-Rahman, Al Rahim. If Allah is talking, how the edit he say in the name of Allah? Guys, let me introduce for you Christian Prince. Christian Prince is going to give you a speech. In the name of Christian Prince. <clears throat> yes, it's true. I'm Christian Prince, but um, <clears throat> in the name of Christian Prince. What the heck? You are a Christian prince, man. Don't say that. They will laugh at you. In the name of a Christian prince. You are a Christian prince. So what your Quran mean by saying in the name of Allah, if Allah is talking? Obviously, the one who wrote the Quran, he is an idiot. He forgot that he told the people that the one is talking there is Allah. So he switched sometime and he forget to switch sometime if the one is talking is Allah how he is saying in the name of Allah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim three names one plus one plus one is a three this is what the Muslim they say same time how many names Allah has the Muslim they will say to you right away Allah has 99 names hold on 99 names I mean what a coincidence I mean 99 names 99 names okay what happened exactly why Allah names start with a three and end with 99 the answer is very simple Jesus lived in this earth for 33 years Allah names start with Allah, Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. X, three names, equal to 99. Any Muslim have an objection? Otherwise, I challenge you to tell me why in the world everything in your religion is multiply of number three. When you Muslims, you make your prayer, what do you do? You say Allahu Akbar three times. What? Allahu Akbar three times? Why? Why? Why you say Allahu Akbar three times? Any Muslim can tell me. Let the Abdul talk. Come on. Let him play in the ground. 
Any Muslim can tell me why you have to say Allahu Akbar three times? When you do ablution, you have to do every practice in the ablution three times, like blowing your nose <laughs> three times, your ears, your face, your hands, your feet three times. Why? Any Muslim can tell us? Is God Almighty to gods? God Almighty Lamu lost mind. You tell me, is Allah is to Allah? Is Allah to Allah to the point he says to them, when Allah come to you, but he is Allah? Guys, you see the Muslim, they keep jumping like monkeys. They will never answer us if we go right now and we search for this. Laugh with me. Hmm. Abdul, read with me carefully. Chapter 2, verse number 29. Allah saying, It is He who created for you the word. Who is the one is talking and who is he? Any Muslim can answer? If Allah is the one is talking, Allah is saying it is he who, the one who created the world for you. Any Abdul? If I am Allah and I am saying to you, it is He who created the world for you, shouldn't I ask Allah, who is He? It is Jabril talking. Oh, this is not a, this is not true because you Muslims claim that every word in the Quran is the word of Allah, not the word of Jabril. So you just got your prophet busted. So now you are saying that Jabril is the one is talking and Muhammad is a liar. Because no single Muslim believe that in the Quran there is one word is coming from Jibreel. And let us make a challenge for you. Can you show me one interpretation says that Jibreel is the one is talking? Can you show me one interpretation made by Muslims saying that this is Jibreel? You cannot. You fail, my friend. Your God Allah is suffering from mental issue. The Quran is inspired by Allah. No one says what you say except selfies. Self, guys, except selfies. Except selfies. No one says what I am saying except selfies, which means the true Muslims. Selfies are the true Muslims. What do you know what Salafi mean? Salafi is the same as saying Orthodox. <laughs> you know, this is how stupid you are. Okay, you know what? I wanted to show me from moderate Muslims interpretation, agree with you that the one is talking there is Jibreel. Forget about the Salafi. Can you show me a moderate Muslim agree with you? Just one. Just one, just one. Can you? Salafis are Wahhabis. Wahhabis are Salafis. Salafis are Wahhabi, but they are Muslims anyway. They are following the steps of Muhammad. Now answer me, why you don't give me, why you don't give me a reference so we can read in the screen together? One of the scholars, you agree. I don't I don't care you quote for me Salafi, Palafi, Malafi, Falafel, Salafi. I don't care. Quote for me a scholar agree with you. Don't tell me you cannot find one scholar agree with you that the one is talking there is Allah. Huh? Actually, the first prayer Muslims they have in their Quran is one of the most funny prayers. If you read this prayer here, it's called Al Fatiha. It is the hilarious one. Comedy. Look with me. Allah is talking. Is that Jibreel or Allah? Hey, Abdul, there. Is that Jibreel or Allah talking? In the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. Praise be to Allah, the cashier, the substance sustainer of the world. Most gracious, most. You eat it. You just said that already here. Didn't you just say that already, guys? Look how stupid the one is talking. I mean, what the point of saying the same sentence again? 
do you see this one do you see this one Abdul do you see this one do you see this one it is the same as this one I mean what the point God he say same words repeating them again and this is supposedly a new verse obviously the God of the Quran is out of words he have nothing to say Christian prince the most gracious most merciful Christian prince the most gracious most merciful Christian prince the most merciful and most gracious to see I've made some change now Christian friends the most the, the no the most gracious most merciful Christian Prince like supposing now I made a change he did not even make the change it's exactly the same sentence what the point and then Allah continue his madness and he says to us the do we worship like what the heck how Allah he says that thee do we worship and thine aid we seek Allah saying that Allah worshiping who any Muslim can tell us Allah he here he's saying to us he worship who What is real happening here that the author of the Quran he's he's a stupid he forgot to switch between he and and I so this is can be accepted as a prayer if he say in the beginning say pray like this Muhammad was trying to copy the words of Jesus our father out of heaven so he come with a stupid statement by saying that the word of Allah is what Allah said and this is what Allah said but he did not say that this is how you pray this is Allah talking now and why Allah saying this unless this is a prayer you have to mention but you forgot to say it's a prayer guys this guy he said Shabir Ali he said that show me where Shabir Ali he said that I challenge you you're a liar this guy is a potato you know what Shabir Ali Shabir Ali would never say that Shabir Ali is a smart person. He will never answer a question anyway. Because the second he answered the question, he will get busted. The Quran is full of jokes. Have you ever heard of a God? He says to us, in the, the judgment day, he is going to show us his shin. What? He will show us his shin? Why? I am so proud that my God, he will show his shin. I mean, I'm so glad that your God did not show his ass. I feel so proud now that Allah is so conservative. He will not show his shin. I mean, he will show his shin only, not his ass. يَوْمَ يَكْشَفُ عَنْ سَاقٍ وَيُدْعَوْنَ إِلَى السُّجُودِ فَلَا يَسْتَطِيعُونَ The day Allah will show his shin, and they will be asked to bow down, but they will not because his shin is so sexy. Any Muslim would like to tell us what's happening here? Shin? Your, your God is a shin? What kind of God this God is? Do we have any Abdul? So they say to us that their God is a one God, but the fact their God is a Shin. Question, as long you Muslims agree that Allah is a Shin, then we need to ask ourselves why he have a Shin and where the Shin is connected to. What is next to the shin? What is the part after the shin? Torah is full of God showing hand and back and legs. My friend, my friend, we don't have a problem with God showing his hand because God himself came to us as a man. You Muslims is the one who have a problem. 
you say that Allah is not a man, but then we find that Allah, he play football. Allah, he jump with his foot. If we go in the Hadith, we will find that the Quran, uh, the Hadith saying, Uh, let us see. Allah will put his foot in the fire and the fire will fart. The fire will make walk, 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 like a like a like a duck. Read with me. Narrated by the Prophet Sahih al Bukhari that the people will be thrown into the hell fire and it will say. Are there any more to come? Like the fire is hungry, man. Till Allah puts his foot over it and the fire will fart and will say, Cutty, cutty. What the heck? Allah will put his foot over the fire and the fire will make cutty, cutty. Any Abdul here would explain to us what the Kati Kati is about? If we call now Zakir Naik, <clears throat> hmm? if we call Zakir Naik and we ask him about this hadith, what he will say? Hello? Assalamu alaikum, uh, uh, brother Zakir Naik. It's me, uh, brother Zakir Naik. We have a question uh, before you talk. First of all, I am thinking that your sound is fitty. I think you are Christian prince, uh, uh, Zakir. Listen to me. You are doing sexual harassment by calling me at my home at my phone number. My name is Zakir Naik, and I'm very well known. I'm going to call the police for you. I told the Muslim. There's a person, his name is the Christian Prince, he keep harassing me. And he is calling me in the middle of the night and he is trying to talk to my wife because he is so sexy and so beautiful. Uh, like, uh, listen, listen, I'm recording you right now. Like, shut up. I swear by Allah, if you do call me again, I'm going to sue you. Like, I, 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 I don't care. He hang up. I mean, I didn't say anything yet. I'm, what we will do now? I, I will risk it and get sued and I will call him again. Hello? Listen to me. Listen to me. I'm losing my patent. I swear by Allah, I'm going to spit at you. Uh, Zach and Nike, you are spitting already from like 20 years and actually the floor is full of and wet. Answer this question and do whatever you want. Okay, what is the question? I will accept your talent for today. Why in the Hadith it says that Allah will put his foot in the fire and the fire will say cut, cut. Hello? Br Brother Zach and Nike, are you there? Yes, it, I'm here, I'm here. Uh, I remember this hadith. This hadith is located in the book of the Muslim. Uh, uh, no, Zakir Naik, it's in Sahih Bukhari. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Bukhari. For, I forgot, sorry. This hadith is located in the Quran, in the chapter. Uh, uh, this is not in the Quran. This is in Sahih Bukhari. Okay. Uh, okay. It is in Sahih Bukhari, but it is, can be found in the Quran, but not in the Quran, in the other Quran which I have at home. However, when the Prophet, he said that Allah will put his foot over the fire, he don't mean that Allah is going to make a barbecue for his foot. And I know exactly what you are going to say. You are going to say to me, what's wrong with your God? He's trying to make a barbecue for his foot. You are an evil person. When Allah, he put his foot in the top of the fire, he is not trying to do barbecue. Zakir Naik, I did not say anything about Barq. I'm just asking why he put his. I understand you. You are going to tell your followers that Allah is trying to make a thick kebab and he is doing barbecue for his foot and then they will lick it off. First of all, Allah foot is against fire and is not going to burn. And just for your knowledge, Allah he don't even wear shoes. 
and the fire cannot burn him for simply he is anti-fire Actually, he is the one who protected the fire and he is the one who created the fire. So how he can burn by the fire? <laughs> it's a stupid Christian prince. But this is not the question. I'm asking you why he put his foot there. I'm not asking if his foot is going to be burned or not. Christian prince, you are out of logic. Imagine yourself, you are going to do camping in the wood. And now it is very cold. What do you do? Um, I make a fire exactly Allah he warm himself up by the fire of the hill he is going to burn you there and you are going to be wood what do you say about it <laughs> you got busted <laughs> uh, uh, Naik, this is not the question I'm asking why he put his foot in the top of the fire and why the fire said cut cut I don't care your God will burn me or not no problem but why he did that do you think Christian Brent Obviously, you are very slow. It doesn't matter how many times I explain to you, you are not going to get it. Don't call me again. Okay? And if you call me again, I swear by Allah, I'm going to curse you. There is a person, his name is Trump. I curse him to be poor. And go and see how much money he has right now. He is very poor. Don't ever try to call me again. He hang up. I don't know. I, I give up. If there is any Muslim can tell us why Allah He put His foot over the fire and the fire said "qat qat." Zakir Naik is not going to answer. Zakir Naik, he think I'm speaking about Allah putting His foot over the fire to make a barbecue as a foot. Any Muslim want to tell us what is the point of this story? Huh? How did Jesus look before he was born to Mary? Answer this. <laughs> Guys, how Jesus looked like before he was born into Mary? The Bible says that God created Adam in his image, you idiot. And the Quran and Muhammad, he copied that and he put it in his, in his hadith. So all of us, we are created in the image of God. Let me show you the answer from your stupid prophet. You see, the Muslim, by the way, they try to change the topic they jump like monkeys, hoping they can get away with it. Read with me. You're a prophet, the thief. He stole this from the Old Testament. Read with me. The prophet of Allah said, Allah created Adam in his image in his picture just to make it to, to make it cl close for you when any one of you fight with his brother he should he should avoid his face for Allah created Adam in his own image do you see it guys is that a verse from the Old Testament? Is that a verse from the Old Testament? Yes or no? Why your prophet copying the Old Testament saying that God in the image of Adam? Any Muslim can answer me why. If your God is not a man, what the statement of your prophet here for and why he is copying the book of Genesis where the Bible says in chapter 1 verse number 27 that God created the man in his image, created Adam in his image. Why he is copying the Bible? Any Muslim can tell us. The answer is very simple. Muhammad is a thief. He is a religion collector. He collects some from the Jews, some from the Christians, some from the Buddhas, some from the Hindus, some from the Sabi, and some from everybody. 
this is the religion of some in other words this is the religion of a threesome and four some and five some In Islam, you can find all the religions some inside. Islam is like a whore slept with everybody in the town to the point she is called the bike of the town, which means whoever wants to take a ride, he can take a ride. And that was Muhammad. With the Jews, he is a Jew. With the Christian, he is a Christian. With the Sabian, he is a Sabian. With the pagan Arab, he is a pagan Arab. He kissed the black stone, he go around the Kaaba, he do everything like them. Right, Muhammad is the bike of the town. Who want to take a ride? And I challenge any Muslim to say this is not true. Even Muhammad, he compared between the image of Allah and the image of the false Messiah. Read carefully with me. Let me get you the hadith. <coughs> mm -hmm. The prophet S A W S A W S A O O O U F O. I mean, this is the only U F O prophet in the world. The Muslims even cannot say his name without adding many letters after his name. S A W S. What the heck is that? Christians they worship Jesus and they call him Jesus. They don't say S A W S F. He is their God, yet they call him Jesus. The Muslims they cannot say the name of their prophet, and suppose he is just a prophet, they have to add B B U H S O W S. S F O O O O M M O L O G A L O O W. I mean, what the heck is that? He's God for them. And look what the Prophet now getting the Abdul busted. The Prophet of Islam is like a woman in the delivery room, with my respect to women who give delivery. Under the pain, they start talking, saying things, give them drugs, they start saying things. Allah knows what they are saying. Muhammad is the same. Look what Muhammad is saying. The Prophet S A W S said, Okay, take a note by the way. This is not Muhammad, this is S A W S. <laughs> said, I have told you so much about the Dajjal, brother, the Antichrist. Eww. I mean, this is getting serious now. Actually, we cannot we cannot go and talk about such a thing without uh, you know, without I mean some kind of uh, background music look at this I told you I told you so much I told you so much about the Antichrist that I'm afraid I'm really really afraid I'm sick afraid that you may not understand because I know trust me I know that you are a bunch of Abdul and I truly truly afraid commercial break if you are afraid that you have some children in your family who do not understand any kind of logic or science or they don't want to listen to you because they are acting like Abdul, we have anti-Abdul medicine. You take one bill a day, seven ajwa in seven weeks, and your son will be a big smart person in less than a month. The end of the commercial break. We continue. <laughs> Because I'm so afraid that you are Abdul and you will not understand. Let me describe for you the Antichrist. He's short. Yes, yes, he's short. He in thought. He's Wally. 
one ear and ye have one eye. Ye have one eye. Like Captain Hawk. An eye sightless. And neither protruding. Nor deep seated. Commercial break. If you are a person who is deep seated and you are trying to lose weight, please follow the following diet, which is mentioned by the prophet. A drain camel urine hot and fresh from the penis of the camel. Any other kind of a drink is not allowed for less than or at least for three days, and you will lose a lot of weight because your liver will be destroyed and you will die. End of commercial break. We continue. If you are, if you are confused about him, you should know that your Lord is not one eye. So all this drama to tell us that your Lord is not one eye? Are you serious, Muhammad? All of this drama, you scared the hell of us, man. You scared the hell of us just to tell us at the end that he is not one eyed I mean, why he didn't say that from the beginning? So all this movie and all this production and this is all the background and music and you brought a Christian prince to us and we call Zakir Naik and Shabir Ali and did that and ever, all of this to say to us that he is not is not one eye. You saw what Allah have two eyes. I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm really disappointed of the intelligence of the prophet. I'm so disappointed. All of this, all of this, the prophet trying to tell us something unique. That Allah is not one eyed person. He don't look like this. Or like this. <laughs> I mean, this is something, man. You Muslims, you got the best prophet ever. I mean, how he got this knowledge, man? The prophet of God is doing his best to explain to us how Allah look like. So he start talking about the curly hair, how big his ass. How fat he is, he is short, not tall, and supposedly he look exactly like Allah, except one thing, <laughs> which is his right eye. <laughs> oh, Abdul, your prophet is amazing comedian, man. That's that's too much. That's that's hilarious. I mean, who can guys resist? the knowledge of the prophet nobody we have to, we have to admit that muhammad he have his own way of explanation so he start telling us about the false messiah how he look like and he is confused that the false messiah he look exactly like allah but allah is not a man anyway supposedly so why you are confused that they will be confused that the Messiah, which is the false Messiah, he will look like Allah, if Allah is not a man. If you look carefully at this story, Muhammad, he just confessed that Allah is a man because he's afraid that the false Messiah, the Antichrist, 
who according to Muslim by the way he is a person who will claim to be Christ and he will try his best to look like a Christ but as you see here Muhammad is afraid that the Muslims they will think he is Allah for he look like a Christ Do you see the problem with this stupid religion? Why you don't call us Mr. Uh, meditating sto uh, Stoic? Are you meditating with the look of Allah now? That Allah is not one-eyed? How many eyes Allah has? A question for the Muslims. How many Allah, how many eyes Allah has? Who is the Muslim wanna tell us? Your prophet he reported to us that Allah is not one eyed, as you see, but he did not tell us how many eyes he have. That is a spider. <laughs> oh boy. What the heck? What? Is that Allah? Allah is not one eye. This guy is not one eye for sure. <laughs> oh boy, uh, the prophet. Uh, this guy Muhammad is full of knowledge, man. Allah is not one eye. Okay, and thank you for the information. Do we have any Muslim here want to say something? Any Muslim want to say something? Guys, don't forget to subscribe to our page if you like what we do here. And don't forget to invite your friends for this is a free school of education. Teach you about the stupid cult of Islam with no mercy. Here, Muhammad get busted every day you're what you would get stoned by Moses don't worry, don't worry about Moses my friend Moses die as a Christian according to Muhammad do you know that <laughs> guys do you know that according to the stupid Muhammad he the Muslim they claim that Moses was a Muslim correct Moses believe in the original sin and that will make him a Christian person believe and Muhammad confirmed that. How stupid this Muhammad is. Do we have any Abdul? I will be stoned by Moses. Okay, show me where Moses says, if I say God is a human, I will be stoned. Show me where it says that. Go ahead. I, I, I want to learn from you. First, uh, first of all, Abdul, uh, we Christian, we don't believe that God is a human. Only you Muslims, because you have a brain of a donkey, you think we believe in that. We believe that God come to us in the form of a human, but he is not a human. And let me get you busted from the Quran. Isn't it your Quran says that Allah, he sent his spirit and his spirit became a perfect man? Does that mean the spirit of Allah is a man? Abdul. Does that mean the spirit of Allah is a man? Yes or no? Allah, he sent his spirit. But his spirit is not a man. By the way, for those who do not know, Muslims believe in God who is not a spirit. He is not. Allah is not a spirit. Allah is only a physical being. He is like a statues. Chapter 19, verse number 17. Allah he sent his spirit and his spirit appeared to Mary as a perfect man the Muslim translation here is false when they say that we sent to her our messenger he sent his spirit his spirit You see here they put between two bracket Jibreel. That's false. Doesn't say Jibreel. 
we send to her our ruh. The word ruh in Arabic is a spirit. So let us assume that this is Jibreel. Okay, so Jibreel is a spirit, according to the Muslims. Jibreel became a man. Is he a man? Who is a Muslim want to give me the answer? If Jibreel, according to your understanding, became a man, is he a man? Hello? Hello? And right away you will see the Muslim now, he changed the topic. He will post something else. The second you get them busted, right away they jump to the second question. They have a website open next to them, copy-paste. Hello? When the spirit of Allah became a man, is that a spirit a man or it is a still a spirit? Who is a Muslim? God is not a man who lie, you idiot. Don't quote without quoting the true verse. It says that God is not a man who lie. For God, don't lie. You are a liar like your prophet. You don't even quote correctly. You are a potato. And this is why Jesus never lie. And this is why the Quran in chapter 19, verse number 19, it says that Jesus is the Holy Son. For he never lie. For he is God. And this is your Quran in front of you. So God is not a man who lie. And that is Jesus. Do you see it? Even your Quran described Jesus as a holy son. Holy son of who? Holy son of God. Who is the father of Jesus in Islam? Who is a brave Muslim can answer me about this? Who is the father of Jesus? Any Muslim have the courage and the knowledge to tell us who is the one who made Mary Bretnet according to Islam. Who is going to answer? Who is the one who made Mary Bretnet according to Islam? May they, may they, we are looking for a Muslim Abdul to give us an answer. May they, may they. Who is the one who made Mary Bretnet with Jesus? According to Islam. May they, may they. A bunch of cowards. The answer is Allah, according to Muslims. So who is the father of Jesus? The father, my father, is the one who made my mother Bretnet. Your father is the one who made your mother Bretnet. Who is the one who made Mary Bretnet? No, not Jibreel. Jibreel is not, it's just a messenger. No. It says there, and we blow into her vagina. Who is the one who blew Allah? If Jibreel, he can make Mary bretnet, that means Jibreel is a man and he having sex with Mary. That means that Jibreel is the father of Jesus. But Muslims don't believe in that. Do we have any brave Muslim here? Potato, 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 Dadam, dadam, the skin. Dadam, dadam, dadam. 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 Dadam, dadam, when we give them a serious question, nobody answer. Don't use bad language, John Doe. Do we have any Muslim here? It 
يعني عبدول هاف ذا كوريج اند ذا نوليدج اني ون هي از سمارت لايك ذا بروفيت محمد بيز ابون هيم دو ديد مسلمز بيت يو از ا كيد اور وات اي لايك وات اور وات اي ثينك وات هابن از اور وات اتس ذا اذر وايز عبدول يو هاف نو ايديا وات ار يو توكينج اباوت اي ام ذا اور وات I am the or what? Who dare? Abdul, who dare? Do we have any Muslim? Or what? Huh? Or what? I am the or what? The unexpected nightmare to Allah. Hmm? Any Abdul? I am the one who made like a thousand watt electricity go in the bum of your prophet every day. The poor Muhammad is really suffering badly because of me. I'm sure because you see the prophet, he said there is a, there is a punishment in the grave. So this guy is suffering now in the grave. Even Muhammad, he claimed that a mule, the mule, he walk, was walking by by the graves. He can hear the screaming of the Muslims suffering in their graves and why the Muslims they were screaming in their grave and they were punished by Allah because they piss in their feet if, 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 if. Muhammad he said that the most of punishment of the grave the torture is because of piss <coughs> must be a true story I mean we have a God his name is Allah he will torture you in the grave, not if you rape a woman, no. Not if you rape a child, no. Not if you kill, not if you steal, no. But because you urinate, and some urination touch your skin, Allah will torture you. Yes, I told you many times that urine is very dangerous. Actually, I heard that Trump, he is going to make a special inspection unit on the mullahs of Iran to check if they are urinating. Because if they do, we should be punished in them and throw them in their grave. I suggest that Trump he should open a special department for the CIA to investigate not uranium no more. They should investigate urination. <laughs> uh, okay, shut up, shut up. Come on, fake lie, fake laugh. We want something real. Allah will punish you because of urine. We have a God. He is not going to torture the Muslims in the grave for rape or killing or theft or no, 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 just for the urine. Oof, that's deep. That's so deep. Amazing. Any Muslim can tell us what's going on? By the way, I want to say thank you for those who made a donation. Uh, I saw, uh, I think two of you made a donation. Thank you very much. I appreciate your uh, uh, generosity. And uh, uh, let me let me make a prayer to Allah that he will not punish you when you die <laughs> because of your end. <laughs> Allah, Allah, please, please don't punish those who made a donation for me because of their urine. Please, Allah, make their urine a holy urine, brother Sitter. The Prophet of Islam he said that in the most torture in the grave is going to be because of urinating. And the reason of urinating became very dangerous because urine these days is very, very, very infected. Other example, 
if you are a person who drinks 7 up or Pepsi Cola, which is made by the Jews, your urine is very dangerous for your salvation. To my friend, you better what? And you better rub yourself with nylon and plastic. Otherwise, urine is going to be a very hard punishment for you. Thank you very much. We are speaking about a God who is the most hilarious, stupid God who want to torture human because of urine. A urine. My friend, you conquer what? First conquer yourself before you conquer others. Come on, the European, they are taking over your land. Abdul, conquer. Most of the Muslims who come to America, by the way, they converted to Christianity. The biggest converted church in the USA is Iranian church. The biggest at all. You can search it right now. Actually, they have even their own TV stations. <coughs> yeah, I advise the Muslims when they go in the bathroom to wear to wear <laughs> to wear condoms <laughs> and to piss in it, <laughs> or to wrap a plastic bag around their private part. Uh, did Jesus poop? Ah, this is a good question. Can you show me where it says he did? I can show you what your prophet he did, and the Muslims were around and around him watching. <laughs> if you can show me where Jesus did, you are you are a winner. Can you? Can you show me? Nowhere it says that, so I cannot speak of something I never saw. If you can show me, be my give me my be my guest. I, it's a challenge. It's a challenge. Any Abdul? I answered you. Can you show me where Jesus did? Can you show me? Do you have a proof that he did? <clears throat> Hello. Hi. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, I was just wondering because I saw someone posting today mm. uh, if Muhammad really was that smart because every person who dies, right, have to leave their body fluid. That includes urine. Have have you have what? When when your body dies, yeah. all your body fluids empties, right? That means your urine comes out on your body. Hmm. So Muhammad was actually more stupid than just so, because that will make you bathe in your own urine. Hmm. If you get but, what I but mean. This is not what Muhammad is talking about. Muhammad is talking about that when you go to the bathroom and urine touch your any any part of your skin, Allah will torture you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm just. But this you, is when, you, but this is when you are alive. Ah. Uh -huh. Yeah, not when you are dead. So when you are dead, this is a different story. When you are dead and you are in the grave already, and now it's going to be, they will give you the quiz of death. But mm. before you die, when you pee, if your urine touch your skin, mm. uh, uh, Allah will torture. And Muhammad he learned that from the Jews. The Jews, uh, they don't believe that God will torture them. The Jews believe. That urine should not touch their body, and Muhammad trying to copy that. This is why the Jews, the Orthodox Jews, when they pee, they have like a container. They pee in it so to be sure that there is there there uh, there is no way urine is going to touch their body anywhere. So mm -hmm. they, they are very very uh, let us say uh, I don't know. I mean they have a phobia about this. So mm. so Muhammad is trying to copy from the Jews, but because he is a stupid false prophet, he copy it and he make it funny. He learned mm. from the Jews that God he punished people in the grave. This is a, this is from the Jews too. The mm. Jews, the Jews, the Jews. This is not from the uh, the Bible. This is from the tradition. The Jews believe that when a, <laughs> when a person he die, his spirit will fly over the grave for a few days and is going to suffer at that time. For the sin he did in this earth, all right. Mm -hmm. This is what mm -hmm. the Jews believe as a tradition. That's not from the Bible. Same time, they taught Muhammad about the punishment of the grave, but they did not explain to him what it is. So Muhammad he took it, he believed in it, and he started adding his own funny stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. You will see here the story. I should say that the Jews came to her and mentioned the punishment of the grave, saying to her, "May Allah protect you from the punishment of the grave." 
Aisha then asked Allah Apostle about the punishment of the grave and he said yes there is a punishment in the grave and then Aisha she said and after that I never saw Allah Apostle but seeking refuge with Allah from the punishment of the grave in every prayer which means Muhammad never pray seeking refuge against this punishment until he learned from Aisha which she learned from the Jews mm -hmm. so he did not learn it firsthand which means he did not get really the details he just learned that a Jewish woman she told Muhammad that she told Aisha that is a punishment of the grave and then after Muhammad he heard that he liked the idea and since then mm -hmm. he never mentioned a prayer without seeking refuge from such a treatment in the grave so Muhammad is simply is a thief he is a false man and he is copying from the Jews whatever he hear but because he don't have the details he have to add his own spice and that make it more funny and more stupid okay yeah. I was just wondering about the other part because to me uh, it's well you can't avoid it <laughs> yeah but, uh, but however however I am not against a person to be clean but Muhammad was not a clean Muhammad he used to dry his hand in the floor and then yeah dry, and the walls and dry his <laughs> hand in the wall and this is disgusting and you can imagine what kind of fall Muhammad he have in his house you know? mm -hmm. especially if we know Muhammad don't take a poopoo in the bathroom he do poop, oh yeah he do poop in his bedroom his bedroom is the bathroom is the living room is the bedroom and he used even to put the dish where he used to piss in under his bed if you remember the story of the mm -hmm. woman who drank his piss and Muhammad he told her no pain will hurt your stomach after today yeah yeah all right insane <laughs> okay that was just my question and I hope that might trigger mr. stoic to maybe connect with you because all right. he seems to have a lot of questions <laughs> yeah well it's in the stupidity see, yeah but see stoic it's not dangerous you don't get your head bit enough well you will get your head uh, uh, punished uh, because when you go in the grave two angels they will come with and they have a steel hammer and the hammer is made from steel not from this earth and then they will beat you yeah they will beat you in your head and you will go 70 cubic down the earth each time they hit you with the hammer in your head you know oh. so yes well i think i think i will be buried with my helmet then <laughs> that's a good one <laughs> Right, anyways check uh, check my questions uh, that I sent to you and uh, the the right. document right. uh, I'm off to bed now okay, very late you. here take uh, care. I just wondered wondered about that take so have care. a good evening you too bye God bye. bless everyone bye bye take care bye bye <laughs> all right somebody sent me a video let Time. me see okay all right yeah guys uh, uh unmasking the fools he sent me this video about the dean show uh this is the link if any one of you would like to uh, watch it about the dean show you remember we spoke about the description of paradise this is my video in the in the in the page of unmasking fools and don't forget to subscribe to his channel <clears throat> All right, watch it and laugh at this stupid religion. Do we have any Abdul would like to call us? Any Abdul? Any half Abdul? Not even one brave Abdul. All right. Any Muslim? No Muslims. All right. I think we have enough for today. Actually, I just wanted to share this with you, and. Uh, uh, I was planning actually to speak not for long, but uh, as usual, we plan for a short video and then the video became really long. Don't forget, guys, to subscribe to our channel and uh, turn on your notifications so when we have our live podcast, you will be with us. Most of the time, I do live podcasting every day, almost, at 4.30 p.m. Sometime early in the morning, sometime even uh, after. 
Hello? 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 Yeah, hello, TV. Hello, my friend. How are you? Yeah, I'm fine. How are you? I'm all right. What do you want to say to us, my friend? Yeah, I have some little question that I just want to ask you about uh, the current. Um, can you call me tomorrow? Because almost I was going to close. Is that okay? Uh, okay. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm very sorry. No, no problem. No, it's all right. You know, because I was just telling them why <laughs> our time is up. So tomorrow, uh, if you don't mind, please call me. I will be here around 4:30, and you can call me after that, and I will be happy okay. to answer your questions. All right, my friend. Okay. Okay. okay God nice to meet you. Also. Take care. Goodbye. Bye. Take care. Bye. 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 All right, guys. Uh, uh, I was just saying, you know, uh, that our time is up. So uh, tomorrow at 4:30. We will be here again, but sometime during the day between, I mean, that now until tomorrow to 4.30, 4, uh, 4 sometime I do live podcast too. So don't forget to subscribe and be with us and join us. All right. So we can, uh, uh, you know, we can answer your questions and don't forget to share our the knowledge we share with you, with your children. Um, try always to keep reference, take notes. And if you like to have reference handies in your hand, you can go and get my books from Amazon.com, which is written in many languages. You can just search Christian Prince books and you will find the list of my books. Now, I advise you, if you are a person who live in certain country, to buy from Amazon, which belong to your country, because I think that will make the shipping a lot cheaper or even sometime for free. So if you are in Amazon, uh, if you're in France, then open Amazon uh, France if you're in England Amazon England Germany etc this way you can get uh, almost free shipping or maybe totally free shipping for my books so I want to say thank you for being here may the Lord bless you all and enter we see you again tomorrow God is willing again and again we repeat and we confirm that Islam is a very false stupid cult it's very easy to defeat and very easy to expose but you cannot expose a lie unless you know about it. You cannot find what is the illness and what is the disease unless you study the disease. And this is why we are sharing with you the knowledge we have, and it's totally for free. For free you took, for free you give. The words of my Lord. Christ is Lord. Islam is false. And we see you soon again. Bye-bye.